<laughs> so I'm laughing at I'm laughing at a comment. I can't understand why people say that. But anyway. First card. Contemplation. Okay, I've I've always had like mixed feelings about this card. Mostly because this card is only good with one with two cards in the whole of like not three cards. I'd say three cards out of the whole Actually, four cards, sorry, out of the whole, um, of a whole of Hand of the Gods, and that is Guan Yu, Imperial Guard, Imperial Archer, and Al Kuang. That's the only cards that this card's good with, but also Al Kuang, Guan Yu's actually really done with this card because he just is basically a board wipe. But that's the problem, that card's only good now. When you have an Alquan, when you have an Alquan and a Guan Yu out on the board, and what happens to Guan Yu a lot of the time when Alquan when he comes out on the field, especially Guan Yu, like those two cards when they come out on the board, they basically either instantly silenced or instantly killed. It's normal still with them. So I just wanted to throw this out here too. I should have stated this before. We're going to be ranking this from one to five. Five being probably <laughs> overpowered. One probably being so <laughs> underpowered it'll never be used. 2, 3, and 4, mm -hmm. 3 being probably perfectly balanced, 4 being a little bit overbalanced, and 2 being a little underbalanced. So we're going to be giving okay. two rankings here, one for Constructed and one for Arena. Okay, okay. Contemplation for Arena, I'm putting 1, because that card's really useless. Okay. Um, constructed, I'd say... Yeah, I'll still say I'll I'll give it a two, just because there's better cards for it. I think I'm going to be putting the same same thing for the same reasons here. I think there's some use of it in constructed. There's almost no use of it unless you have already got like two or three Guan Yus in your Chinese mm -hmm. deck to ever pick contemplation mm -hmm. in arena. So I think we're in agreement here. Definitely ones and twos here. So the next card mm -hmm. we have to look at is pulling Crescent Blade and putting that directly into your deck. See, that's the problem. This card's like, I know it's why it's here, because it's a card, obviously, that you can get from Nua, but it's just pointless because she can get free with Gladiator. So why would you have, to me, it just has little, it has like, to me, no value just because you can get with your leader ability and you can get it free with a gladiator on the board so why would i put something in there so would you say that this card has no use in either format yeah basically i would say no use all right we have ones Don't across the board if you're playing if you're playing arena if you're playing arena and you get new bar you don't need a crescent blade. That's literally the whole point of the. It defines the whole point of the card. And if you're creating an actual constructed deck, there's so many other. There's one is one so many other spells, and two you get it for free anyway. For gladiator on your board, on your board. No, I agree. Now this next card, I know you had already talked about it a little bit when we were drafting. I think there's Jade some use Boone. for this card. Jade Boon, yeah. It's not the worst to me, but I obviously don't think it's very good. I think it's rubbish. And is that going to be... I, I, I don't say that. Is that going to be for cards. both? Yeah, I, I put it on like uh, one, both. Okay, well, the only thing I really see this as I'm giving it a two for is in Constructed, and it's purely based on a... A uh, new Wa Godwa rush deck that I haven't been able to get working perfectly, but when you get this on Niza, it's actually pretty decent. And uh, True. other but, than that, it's but, almost no use. Uh, but yeah, I kind of disagree with the statement of Godon Godwa because Recursive Vitality, which is a car below Jade Boon, yeah, it's 10 times better than a Jade Boon. Like, I know it gives a plus one at, continuously, but. Recursive Vitality can be used all the time. And on Godwa, you're getting that all the time. So, in my opinion, 
Jade Pink's still a rubbish card. Okay. No, it's a point well taken. Um, and I would... If I was forced to, like, I'm, I am kind of riding the fence here. I am kind of in between one and two. Uh, I don't want to give something that's a complete, or that has maybe some use, possibly in a, uh, the gauntlet, maybe the one. But I could, I wouldn't argue against someone saying it is a one. I, I could see why people think it's totally bad. On on yeah. on to the next card. Uh, we talked a little bit about mana it earlier burst. as well. Is mana burst? But this cards is the card that I said that had potential that but the way I'll put it the first way I'll put it is that the good thing about this card is that it it's changed the mentality of this game just like the score you did when you play against new before when you play against new I was what spells has she got in her hand now the question you got to ask as well as well as that is now do you have you used up enough mana so that she can't kill mana burst she can't mana burst something. That's the question you have to ask now. Because if she has mana burst in her deck and you left like four mana open, that's four free damage for one. That's four damage for one mana. It's, it's kind of dumb. Incredibly powerful. Exactly. But the problem with mana burst is that it's situational. It's a good card in general, as in what it does, but you have to choose the right turn to use the card. So just to build on kind of what you're saying when when i was looking at this card um i see it replacing again we're talking about a comcast employees deck if you threw those mana bursts mm -hmm. into where those infernos were in that deck that deck would sing better than it did with the infernos um you're not going to be getting eight damage out of it probably but you're getting one for maybe four to six and if you're talking about a curve based deck it's incredibly powerful and you're able to still shoot the summoning stone with it. So uh, yeah, what what are you going to give for rankings for arena and constructed for mana burst? Um, constructed, I'll give it a free. I'd say, I'd say free. I wouldn't say four because it's not too strong. Um, just for, yeah, for, yeah, that's the arena. For constructed, I'd give it three. For arena, I would give it. Hmm. Arena, I'd give it two, just for the fact that there's just so much better I usually get than the mana burst. Okay, well, I, I went with three and three here, so again, we're very close. Um, I agree mm -hmm. that this card's unreliability leads to it being most useful and most utilized in a time you've probably already won the board and therefore a little yes, bit of a win more card. So we're, we're very close on that one as well. And I think this mm -hmm. next one, uh, we're, we're probably going to agree on as well, which is Manifold Blade. I love this card. I, I do as well. love this card. I think this card's amazing. The fact that it's a it like beat, it's literally like Beast Wars Dream of Removal. Like one damage plus one for every beast in play. It's basically two beasts, three damage. Like, it's just amazing. In my opinion, it's so much more. Like, one of the, I, to me, it's just one of the new ones. It's, if you don't have a beast out, it's one damage. One man off one damage, not too bad. Obviously, it's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's basically like a Crescent Blade. Yeah, it's that is a true. Blade that gets upgraded. That's the way you're thinking. This is basically a crescent blade that can get more damage with you dominating the board, and that's what Beast was aiming to do—to just flood the board. And d could you so, imagine this card being uh, playable in an Egyptian deck with uh, <laughs> with Bastet? <laughs> that's the thing. Um, no, for the sake of. Uh, don't always want you that is because that is a conditional because Bastet would have to always die. You don't always want Bastet to die. You, well, you, if you want Bastet to die, you want her to trade. She's usually my only god in my beast Egyptian deck, is, is why I bring that up. Um, oh, okay. I don't think they're ever going to give Egyptian a direct nuke like that. Uh, definitely doesn't no, fit their no theme. Wrong. Too niche, too, uh, yeah, too niche as well. So, what are you going to give this for uh, constructed? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. I I also. Beast, what, beast was so strong. 
I also am going to give it a four. I was considering giving it f a five because I was thinking no. if this five card was... Checking. Exactly. I was almost about mm -hmm. to give it, but I thought, though, if you were to remove this, do you think Beast Wall would still be a thing? How essential is this? Because how, how powerful is this to making Beast Wall function? It's, I'd say, very powerful because one of Beast Wall's weakness is that it doesn't have a good clear. And you're so highly focused on beasts. And obviously, you just want, you just want good straight-up removal to make your beast go in and take the summoning stone. Now, this card can either make your beast trade or do enough damage to kill it, the creature that's in your way, or kill. What more do you want? It's a good point. What about for Arena? Obviously, probably a little less valuable, but still... I'll probably say... I'll say free. And obviously, like value. if you have more you beasts, watch... right? Yeah, obviously, yeah, because once you... Most of the time when you play Arena, you can kind of guess if you're going Beast War or not. And like that, well, to me, it's kind of obvious when you you can tell when you're going to go Beast War when you play Arena. Because you start to realize if you're trying to gather up Beast or not. Totally. And uh, our next card is going to be Recursive Vitality, one of the newer cards added. How do you feel about that one? Easy. This card is amazing. It basically makes Godwar stupid. It's literally, it's literally the card that makes Godwar so strong. And do you feel that it's deserving of the five or four indicates enough? Because I had it at four personally. I have it for four. I wasn't going to say five. It's a strong card, but it's not, it's not five. Because you can play this spell new as well, but it's not five yet. It's a four. Maybe evolving into something more powerful as more gods come out, however. It depends on what the god does. Obviously. So obviously. with someone like Along Shen. Alan Shen's not really meant he's not there to be a scary four four. He's scared to change your blades into into three headed spears. Yeah, and to kill the machines. Someone, <laughs> but if, exactly. But if it's someone like Sun Wukong or uh Jing Wei whose idea is to make you freaking get a big creature out then yeah. Or big god out, then yeah, that's when because it becomes scary. Because then if he does ox if he does Tiger and then Recursive, he's a freaking 9-7. And then Jingwei comes out as a 5-4, that's a what, a 6-4. That's, that's quite scary. No, oh, totally. So, do you feel that it deserves the 4? I bumped my rating yeah. down here in Arena. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have it at 3 for Arena. I'd say, but... I'd say a 3. I was going to say a 3 for Arena. It's quite hard to get a Godwa in the arena, so... Obviously, just like the Manifold Blade rating, however, if you have more gods already, aim for it in arena if you have the chance. Mm -hmm. So our next card is Silence, which we might disagree here a bit. See, the problem with Silence is that... Silence is, in principle, it's a good card, but Silence is a really potent right now in... The smile, like sciences are like everything in the smile. But the problem is, is that there's a card that does it better, and you get a body. Chaos Spawn does the exact same thing, and it's a body. That's the problem with the card. Now, is Chaos Spawn overpowered, and that's why all the rest no. of the silence effects are seem weak, or is it just every other silence effect probably needs to be boosted to the point at which Chaos Spawn is right now? I wouldn't say Chaos Spawn's overpowered, and I wouldn't say the other sciences are undervalued. It's just, it's the value that you get out of it. It's value. I know one for once for science or something is good, but would you rather pay two mana to science and, and get a two free body? Yeah, I'd happily pay that. Totally. I mean, I have this at two for both. I actually would almost go to a one for Arena because of how much tempo you will lose by not playing a creature possibly but it can get you out of some some things so that's why i did leave it at the two i'll leave it at one for constructed because you're never probably going to run silence if you constructed you will never run silence you just put chaos spawns and like if you're odin you have like uh you have other ways to silence as well so um 
and then for arena I'll run I'll put it at a I'm gonna put it at a two or one. I'll put it at a one because if you see it in the silence you're probably gonna find you're probably gonna take a creature. No problem. So we're gonna be moving on to the next card now, Aftershock, which I think we feel like similarly this about this. Yeah, same thing. Um, too conditional. Well, too conditional. I don't think we really need to talk too much about it, uh, but other mm -hmm. than what what rating do you have, and maybe how Both do you think ones. you could make it better? If it was deal free damage and stun or something like that, like it would have to have it would have to have the stun factor added on, not a condition of when it's stunned it does more damage. Or, or like do three damage or two damage and then draw a card or something like that. Like it has to have something better. But you have to have uh, it has to be stunned and do five damage. It's poor. So that means I have to use calamity with it or I have to use tusky with it, which is five mana for only doing five damage. No, you're right. Yeah, and on to calamity at that point, which I think is a much stronger card than aftershock for the same cost. Place. So, so give me a second. I'm just reading Damien Dad's comment. Not sure the name of the card, but gets a boost and takes no damage when you cast a spell. Oh, we're talking about Imperial Guard. Yeah. <laughs> it is super broken. That card is so strong. I won't say broken, but that, that'll go definitely in the five. But I think he yeah, is broken personally. Card. I think he could take one one hit on his health and be completely viable at three three, as a three cost. No, I, I, the only reason why I'm saying no is because he's meant to be a chump block. That's fair. That's fair. That's why. Like he can kill and chump block. That's the whole point of him. He's supposed to be like a two in one character type of offensive slash defensive character. Do you have any comments That's on what? Calamity to go with uh, what I think is probably going to be a high I'm... rating? <laughs> yeah, three, four, three or four, in my opinion. Uh, across both I'll sides? Three, just, uh, I'll put it at three at both sides, just because like War Behemoth is another really good card draw. So. Okay. Uh, there's better ways to gain more card draw, but this card has such good value in my opinion. I wouldn't put it at four, because four means it's like super strong, and it's not super strong. It's strong, I, but it's not. Oh my god. I would argue that it is pretty strong for ranked, and I, I would go four there, but barely. Um, pretty. I would be okay with going with the three there as well. Mm -hmm. Next card is, is very niche. Uh, Celestial Guard. I've only used it once in a gauntlet deck and other than that I I really haven't found much use of it. Yeah, I agree. So I'm I'm actually uh, gonna be putting ones here. I'm putting ones here as well. Two niche. You don't want to waste two men on China. Now if it was not one what, but not my, if it was sorry. one cost, would you feel that it would be a lot more useful? Yes. Easily. I, I cost, do too. No, no one cares. No one, one mana would no one would even care about the card. They'd just be like, one mana, fine. One mana to put on a Guan Yu, fine, because everyone targets Guan Yu or or, or Alquan or Gladiator, whatever you want to try to protect easily, and no one would mind. It means you have to trade. That's what basically what it means. It means you have to trade or put a uh, war cry on it. Completely. So you you said um, with the Celestial Guard. We're going to go ones across the board for both of us. Mm -hmm. And our next card is Emperor's Prize. Uh, this card, I actually, I saw it used quite a bit in HRX tournament. At first, I didn't rate the card. But as it got played more and more, I started to understand its value. One, it's stupid card draw, because you can get a lot of card draw out from this. Yeah. Um... I'd say you're averaging two or three cards for two mana, which by itself, exactly, which that's is great. Stupid, yeah, that is amazing. Two mana for three cards, happily drawing that card. I'm, I'm putting that card. I'll put that. Uh, hmm, I'm gonna put it out. Three, four, four. I'll put it out three because it's a really good card draw. 
I actually have that for both constructed and as arena as well. Yeah, I'll put in arena as well. That's three. I, I almost always want because one in arena. In arena. You're always trying to bring out creatures. Yep. You're always when you always bring that stuff. You, you, the whole point of arena is to be able to bring out something more every turn, bigger every turn. I agree. You do that and an Empress Prize, and you're just gonna fuck like, so much card draw. It's actually stupid. Now our next card is uh, one that I don't really like as much. I've seen mm -hmm. it used invigorate. I've seen it used well, but I just don't feel it's it doesn't have as much of an impact as I'd like. The the times it's good, it's great, which is when you're using it to buff something to trade into something else and let it survive. But when you're already mm -hmm. down, it's really hard for me to justify it helping you come back. No, I agree with you on that one. The card has so much potential and value in the beast. Well, but that's in problem with any deck. If you're behind, this card becomes irrelevant. It doesn't have value. So I put two for arena and three for constructed. What do you feel for that? Mm. Yeah, I would say the same. Three constructed and then two in arena just because I could put three if I was contemplating with arena because arena you always get beasts no matter what but that is true it's, as you said it's just so the problem if the card wasn't such a situational card like it has to be when you're aggressive or you're even on the board it's all right but once you're behind that card literally has no value you think you're a waste of a card in the deck. So, for our next card, which is kind of mediocre, if you ask me, we have Pummel. Do you have any comments? Rubbish. Rubbish? One. One on both. Um, that one, I'm not even going to talk about it. It feels like it's overcosted, and it's not cantrip, correct? Mm-hmm. I yeah. just don't rate the cards. I just don't really have any one damage to enemy unit and it stuns. One it would be damage cool and if, it stuns. Uh, Pummel was the opposite of Calamity, where it mm -hmm. would maybe do one damage to a, a column and then you draw a card. I think giving mm -hmm. Chinese more access to cantrips will more further the synergy with a spell type deck. I don't know how it would. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't really boost the the god or the the beast wall decks, but I think it would give some more breath to the um, the spell wall type of decks. Mm -hmm. So I our agree. next three. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I agree, but I feel like calamity is good as it is now, just because the stun factor, especially in spell new world, because one of the problems with spell new world is that you don't want always want to trade. Um because you want to keep stuff on the board to kind of synergize with the spells is that Calamity I feel like enables Nuwa to get aggressive without punishment that's why I like Calamity as it is now it stops that punishment factor in my opinion same with Beast War Beast War can get a good well gets, Beast War is aggressive anyway but it doesn't have to trade that's why I like Calamity as it is Gaming Dad had a great suggestion, which would be one damage and stun a whole row. That would be a fantastic card for Spell Wall as well. Oh yeah, that would be a stun. I feel like I'd become too, a bit too strong. <laughs> I would even pay so three mana for that, strong. probably. <laughs> exactly. I like that'd it, though. be a bit too strong. It would be a good card, but I feel like Spell Wall would go out of control. So, uh... Now, I have to admit, you were the one who brought me along to using this card. I did not like using it for the longest time, but partially that mm -hmm. was because I only had one. Uh, Al Kuang? How do you pronounce that again? Mm -hmm. okay. Al Kuang. Yeah, you're right. I only had one for the longest time, so I really wasn't rocking mm -hmm. this card. And now that I have two of them, and I'm definitely running <laughs> two of these and two of the five drop, it is fantastic. I, I have come to see the light. I... I was totally missed on this one. <laughs> okay, I love this card. This card is literally like the anti-Odin card. Like, it just tells Odin to go away, do one, go back to Valhalla. 
that's literally what this card tells everyone. You're going to run a token deck that's 1-1s. One, I don't care. Russian Thunder's in my hand. You can do all you want. I, I want to like, hear. I want to hear first. Which one do you feel is it best in? Obviously, Constructed and... If oh, you feel that. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go on. I just wanted to make sure I knew which uh, format you're talking about here. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's basically... It's, that's Gaming Dad saying. It's basically board wipe. If it's out with alcohol. Double alcohol instant board wipe. Uh, Guan Yu space that... Uh, that Guan Yu, like, if you have 10 mana, and obviously most of the time you're going to use Guan Yu when it's really late. If you have that plus a one or two crescent blades in your hand, well, that's one damage done uh two damage instantly and then two more crescent blades that's two more damage that's like four damage across the board instantly i'm forgetting about the two damage that you choose to do targets to so kind of kind of strong like, i'm putting that really high constructed i put it as like a four like you must have it in your deck most of the time in newer what about for arena Per free. Okay. And I agree with you on both of those. Mm -hmm. Now our next card here we have is Siphon Mind. What do you feel about this I card? This. I think the card's good. Two mana to do damage to summon stone, which can also lose to lethal, and it's a card draw. I think it's a good card. And would you use um, this in both formats? Yeah, I wouldn't use. I'll would use it in both formats, but I wouldn't use it. Uh, the value of it wouldn't be as high to me because calamity does to me is better. But the problem with calamity is that it's conditional. Like you only play the card if you can stun something or you need to stun something. Well, siphon stone, siphon mind is you can draw a card whenever you want. That's true. But then again, you could also argue that all the harpy or uh, Empress Price is a good card draw. Uh, Empress Mind or Empress Prime. Empress Price is also a good way to card draw. So that's why I'm saying it's a good card draw, but there's just so many other ways to card draw as well. What ratings would you give it? Well I'd give it a three. Light and constructed new one is yeah. three, and then arena I'd say three as well. I don't feel like it's overpowered. I don't think that's underrated, but I don't feel like it's overpowered. I I have three on constructed, and I'm going down to two on arena. I'm really a big like person that goes heavily bored on arena. It might be a personal play mm -hmm. style thing, but. I mm -hmm. would not be against seeing this card go from two to three damage and still being mm -hmm. the same cost because of having the restricted targeting on it. I, I in oh. constructed, I understand when you want to burn someone down and the value of it, but in arena, I want a little bit more out of the pick. Mm -hmm. I understand, I understand. What's the next card? Our next card is transfusion. Transfusion. What's that? The, oh, the unit one. The one that yep. sets your health to equal. Um, in my opinion, I don't really... It has value for Beast War, but that's the only value I see of the card. That's my problem. Do you feel that the best cards that you'd be combining this with are not really playable in the current meta, which are the behemoths? A war behemoth. A war behemoth or the other one, which is the four costs. You just don't have enough creatures that are dying with new wall. So it kind of seems like this card is out of place to me in, in this faction. Well, the card's out of place. I won't say war, but war behemoth is in the meta. No, no, not so war be behemoth. Less, um, here, let me let me go check here real quick. Oh, the one that does more damage. Armored behemoth. And gives there, me power. Yeah. there he is. Armored behemoth oh, okay. and carrier behemoth. Those are the ones I'm talking about. Um, okay, I see your point. Like, the way I think of it is that... Uh, 
I agree those cards, it would be good those cards, but as you said, the meta does not favour those cards, and Armoured Behemoth's not a good card anyway, so... True. Yeah, it's so, such a conditioning card. I went with two for Arena because I am I actually will like to draw Armoured Behemoth in that format, uh, but other than that, I, I, I have a pretty low one here in Constructed. I don't know, one in Constructed... I feel like it has a lot of a bit of value in the arena. So I'll go to just because it you know, enables creatures to get big, like unintentionally. Uncont so like an early game, um, like an early game, let's say Imperial Archer or Imperial Guard even can become a four-four, and it will become a five-four because you cast the spell. So, totally. I feel like it has potential. So the next card here we have is Arcane Conduit, and um, mm -hmm. I believe this card has much different value depending on the format, or maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong there. Would you like to elaborate? Um, Conduit is like Nuwa's safeguard, in my opinion. It's a card that she can use when she needs to get hyper defensive. But the problem with this card is that it's susceptible to silence. And what is really potent right now in this meta? Silences. It's true. Silences you... and plus range that still can deal with Arcane Conduit. Do you believe in the um, the argument that by having Arcane Conduit as a silence target, it's going to leave them without uh, a possible silence for when you drop that Guan Yu? It's, that's, that's the one how one's going to say as so well. It's good. It's good. It's a good card to bait silences. I see. But what you have to think of it is that even if you play Spell New World, which is, which is where this card probably would be played the most, it's... I just feel like you just play defensive, and this card, I feel like, just has, it's like wasted because there's so much other cards that have more value. For example, obviously Huyi's, Imperial Guards, Projection, Gladiators, Alquangs, Guan Yu's, Wukong's, Dragon King, etc, 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 etc. Three is a very I crowded mean, spot for Nuwa, no matter whether you're playing God Wa, Spell Wa, or Beast Wa, it seems. There's always Wa, a lot. Exactly. Yeah. There's, too many, there's too much value. There's too many cards that have a high value that you prioritize over an arcane conduit. But so, in Arena, though, it's annoying because people can't like... Arena is about bringing creatures out continuously. How can you bring something out continuously if you can't even get to their song this thing? That's the problem with... Uh, with that's why I feel like this card has a bit more value in uh, Arena. Because Arena does what is needed. It does, what, it, does what, uh, it does the worst thing that what to any Arena deck slow it down. And arena's about fast pace, spring creatures out all the time. If this card can stop it, one card, and plus you're not always drawing sciences in the arena, so this card becomes a bit more potent. I would say that it is incredibly power in arena, in, uh, arena powerful, and mostly mm -hmm. used as a surprise factor, not using it as something yeah. to cast and leave out there, but instead, it is the best oh shit recovery that you really have. I agree with you there. Mm-hmm. So, how are you going to throw rankings on this card? Constructed one. Okay. Because this card only has one use in one deck, and even in that one type of deck, it's not good. So, if it's not good in that deck, what's the point of using the card? Um, which is obviously spell well. Um, what's the other one? Arena? And then Arena, I would put it at... A free, just because I feel like it's like a saving grace in arena. It's like yeah. a hell mary. I think that's a good play too. Again, if you're playing it on turn six, using your hero power and using one uh, saved up spell, you're doing a decent amount of damage to whatever's on your side of the board. And turn six is exactly. usually a pivotal a pivotal play against most of the rush decks. Mm hmm. Our next card, which might have been part of the reason why Arcane Conduit does not have as much favor anymore, was the newly added Beckoning Strike. Oh, my bae. 
my bay of cards. This cards is amazing. Don't care what anyone says. This card is absolutely amazing. Definitely putting it out for for both, like instantly. I actually considered giving it a five for uh, arena, but I am also at four across the board. This is an incredibly powerful card. It's literally a card that can change tempo and yeah. some and its removal. It's not even it's not even damage. How many times I've drawn like my RNG of this card is probably one of my be probably my best RNG of a whole game. How many times I've gotten a Rackney and Rama with this card? You stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually just got a uh, Rama in the stream earlier on, I believe, the third game mm -hmm. in in the arena deck that you drafted for me. It exactly. it was so powerful. It's so powerful because it's unpredictable. It's not expected. And once that comes out. <laughs> People, the first thing people are thinking is, I have to waste removal on that card. I actually have to waste removal on a card that literally I got for free. You're wasting removal on a card that you should be, that I don't care about. And then I have all my cards that I'm worried about removal and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Or silence or something like that. You're wasting, you're wasting a card that you're wasting like potential removal or silence on a card that I don't care gets silenced or killed because it's free. I don't care about that card. All I care about is my my actual cards in my deck that card's just a bonus true it's additional force you can apply onto the board exactly and as well as that the pillars you can get out of it like pit obviously pillar of banish is quite rubbish but pillar of polarity which is reducing your attack and pillar of earth, earth are yeah. so strong when they come from that so. do you know if you get a pillar of life uh through any of the cards uh do you know if that actually will die at the beginning of your next turn with the change to Ganesh, or is that specifically for his hero power? That's for his hero power. So, so when the Pillar of Life comes out, so let's say uh, it's end of his turn, it's about to end his turn and he plays it. During your turn, the Pillar of Life is alive and it heals during the start of your turn. But then at the start of his turn, it dies. I see. Okay. So um, we're going to be moving that's, on that's to something something that's definitely a lot less powerful here, but we got Blade Forge, one of your personal Die. pet peeve cards. Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. Don't kill anyone who says rubbish card. <laughs> rubbish cards. So how, card. So how rubbish is rubbish? Are you saying this is deserved of a one? Cause, or Aesthetic. is this just... Really? Okay, let me explain. To all people watching this as well, let me explain to you as well. There's Blade Forge, right? It, you deploy it, zero four, brings uh get you get a decursive blade when you bring a creature out. Now what other cards do that? Oh yeah, Gladiator. Gladiator is a one man or more for a four four body <laughs> and you get three crescent blades unconditionally. You don't have to bring anything out, don't have to do anything, it gets it out. And then you're thinking, yeah, but you can still get crescent blades when you bring creatures out. Okay, let me let me give you another scenario. And this scenario happens in every game. What happens when you silence a crescent blade? What happens when you silence a blade forge? It's a zero four, take up a slot in your where you can spawn stuff. It's nothing. Now tell me what happens when you silence a gladiator? Oh wait, it's still a four four body. That can still <laughs> use projection off it. Yeah. I think my argument's done. Now, I, I don't disagree with any of the points you brought up. But especially for a deck that's built around dropping a lot of low creatures, I have played this in Gauntlets before. Now, Gauntlets, that's yeah, the difference. That's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> and that's why I, it's hard for me to give it a 1, considering when you restrict some rules, meaning if you have some change in the meta for some reason, it could become decent. I'm not saying it could become great, but I'm saying it could be become usable if Chinese get some more two and three drop, or I guess more two drop, early two drop board presence, creatures. Something you can follow up the Blade, blade Forge with early so you get immediate use out of it. Whereas now it feels like the earliest you can really drop this and get the good use is turn six. And it's not a powerful turn six at all. No, I still think it's useless, even if you did get money. Still think it's a rubbish card. No problem. I understand. I've I've definitely talked with you a lot about this card before, and I, I definitely understand where and you're coming from. 
the way you have to think of it is that even if you try and bring this out early, you have to bring something out with it early, which is never going to happen because it's free cost. Yeah. Gladiator, which is a turn after Blade Forge, I bring it out and I get a and I can get a Crescent Blade anyway, which means I can combo off it instantly with anything on my board if I have like a Imperial Archer, which also I would never play, but like or Imperial Guards, or it's true. Alcon on the board if if I really had to if I had Alcon out already like there's just too much you can do with that card. It's too back. much potential that have. It comes back to the same thing with Arcane Conduit, where this is a very packed spot for the Chinese decks, and this is yeah. going to be um, the opportunity cost of playing it. Yeah. And even then, it's just, I'm putting it one for Constructed, and then one for Arena, because Arena, you wouldn't even take it either. So, our next card, which I've got four of in the Arena deck, Hua Bua. Hua Bua. Four, instantly. In actually, I may even put a five. Actually, it may be even my five. It may even hit the five mark. It's almost too powerful for New World. For yeah. which uh, which format? Both. I may even put five for both. I was I'll actually. Yeah, I had I had put a five for Arena. I think for Constructed again. He. I'm I wouldn't put him in all all Chinese decks, but almost all of them for sure. No. Yeah. Uh, five. I'm putting him with five. No, Just because he's out of fine. all Chinese decks, he has two out of three decks that he can be used valuably in. He can be used to be valuably in Beast War, but you're kind of focused on Beast that one. Daiji usually takes up the God Spot. But in in God War, instantly amazing. In Spell New War, it literally brings her tempo back. So, yeah, I'm putting that at five. Okay. No problem. Um,. Hugh That's Yee? my first five. No, it's my That's first five, five as well. That's another five. For Arena, I have I him at five. five. But for Constructed, yeah, you feel? Five. Okay. Five. I have both five. Doesn't matter. Playing Godwar, even Beastwar, even, and obviously Spellwar, you're putting him in. Doesn't matter. He's literally a god that can attack a backline without, with no punishment. Do you think he was as powerful before without recursive vitality, or he was one of the biggest recipients in a power boost because of that card? I think he was strong without it. It's, it's, what makes him strong is not the recursive vitality, it's his, it's his ability. It's basically a ricochet and smart. You hit something random. He has this RNG base, which I have to admit is still a factor, but free damage for not taking extra damage is amazing. This is true. Do you know how many times I've played games and I've got double hees and then all that he and I, I get early he they can't bring anything out. Oh you bring out backers, I attack you, he ye crescent blade dead, doesn't matter. You bring set out as free cost again? Oh okay, he ye crescent blade done. Then what they get they get angry and silence a he ye. I don't care. Silence he ye. You just take one of your silences away on a t on a two three. That's still a ranged unit. I'm not bothered. I think that's a fair assessment. And at that point, um, I wouldn't even be against upping my constructed rating to five. I'm going to be thinking about that as we continue on. Um, Niza, uh, we've talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, where do you think mm -hmm. she or he ranks in uh, both arena and constructed? Arena, oh, let's go constructed first. Constructed. Nezha to me is just that only good in one type of deck, in my opinion. Like, it can be good in Spell War, because spells affect Nezha, which is good. But I feel like in God War is where Nezha excels. Because Nezha is literally like a. Should I Nezha, he, sorry, he either trades or kills. Yeah, that's what Nezha's kind of. That's 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 the whole point of Nezha, in my opinion. He's a trade, either trades or kills. So, and in that in that sense, I think he's very strong on three. Where, like you're saying, either you trade your three into him, or he's gonna power up and then kill your four drop. And uh, it's, you never want to make that decision. So, it, I mean, yeah. he has his uses, but I, for me, I'm giving him that's threes. His, that's the whole point of him. Do you do yeah, you no, feel that he's free. higher? Okay. No, I would put him at three. Just because he's he's good, but he has one purpose. Kill or trade. 
I that's, think that's, that's fair. That is literally him summed up. That's all. That's that is Neja summed up. Kill or trade. At the next Pretty card, I think is which it can be defensive. Oh, I'm sorry. My... Why don't you finish what you're saying? I was, was going to say that um, with Neja, that uh, I feel like. Oh my god, that I felt weird. Um, with Neja, I just feel like it's uh, like it's like Imperial Guard's just a better Neja. That's a great way of putting it. Because Neja is good because of the double damage, but which is what it, they used to call it double strike in uh, Magic. That's how I'm, that's how I know Neja. It's cut, like his card is literally like a double strike. The double strike you had to unconditionally. In this one, you obviously you have to play a spell. Um, Double well, strike, however, Neja, strikes first, right? You first strike. Yeah, you get first strike, yeah, and then you strike again to the second hit, which is the reason why double strike was so valuable in Magic. But in this one, Neja does the two damages. If Neja had double strike mechanic in this game, then I'd put Neja higher. I'd put Neja much higher. Because a Neja Willix. Would be able to hit, uh, kill. A I Willix watched. was the mm. first person and. Prior to being changed, the only person that had something close to first strike. Uh, I really liked her ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I understand why they had to change it because it was game breaking in Arena. Not that anyone picked. Uh, they, they didn't change it because it was game breaking. That's not even why it oh, it's got changed. It really got changed because they wanted to make it make it suited towards what our patch does. Because that's not even because uh, the problem was uh, mine was weak. And my, mine's only early game card was a Weedix. Like, if you, there was no Weedix, then you just really had no early. Yeah, agreed. So, I don't think a Weedix got nerfed because, or changed because she was too strong in the arena. That, that was, to me, that was like far from it. To me, I the, think the fact that made her. You don't think that they was... balance all around the arena and uh, Gauntlet? and Because I really think that was the reason why they made the no. Kraken change no. specifically. It, it's like. It's like um, smite. When you're balancing something, you balance. You're when you're balancing something, you're trying to balance over decks, not arena and a gauntlet. When smite balance gods, they balance over around conquests, not arena, not not siege, not clash, over conquest. Now god gets buffed. It's up because of conquest changes. So when they and obviously the mentality is probably going to be the same for most games. So. And you smell you're balancing a uh, card game, you're probably going to do it based on decks. Oh, that's a fair assessment. And um, the next card also is one of the newer cards that is pretty good projection. Oh my god, this card is beautiful. Four already instantly. I agree. Love this card. Love this card. This card literally gives creatures value even if they're silenced that's the whole point of projection do you and feel if, also if our kong's if our kong's on the board is five damage or, or like if, if our kong if you projection our kong's five damage uh do you play jingwei you in your damage? deck by the way i did used to play jingwei then i took jingwei out because i started playing erlong shen because erlong shen obviously is erlong shen so gotcha no, I was, if I did I put Jingwei back that. in, I would take out. Uh, if I did play, I don't even know what I'd take out. I'd probably take out maybe a calamity or something like that. If I had to, like I've... one calamity. I wouldn't take out Russian Thunder because that's like because I have one Russian Thunder and that's literally just what Odin. I found that. Uh... Jingwei combined with projection is probably the best uh, turn 10 play that you get out of two cards with Chinese right now. Um, I do rate that, but I just feel like you can do better projections earlier. That's really the reason why. Like, you can projection Alcon, projection Gladiator, projection sure. Long Shen. Like, there's so many ways you can. And once you projection that early, there's obviously four damage that early is quite strong. You get so much control in tempo. And once Nuwa has high tempo, she's won. No, I agree. It's hard to come back against the Nuwa. Hu Yi is a big part of that, but obviously just the sheer amount of spells able to nuke down your creatures and play a sly game like from Magic uh, and just 
have their little weenies beat you up. Yep. So I have fours across the board for both of us, and uh, the mm -hmm. next card I actually have never used in Constructed, which is Recall. Constructed, it's useless because it's hardware does the same thing, and you get a body. So it's just a useless card in Constructed. And Arena, it's useless because you just go for hardware anyway again. So I always wondered about that. I wondered maybe this was from a time when uh, Huawei was not around or something. I, I don't understand what Recall is for. Yeah, literally, Recall is the worst version of Huawei, so. I have ones yeah. for this card. Do you have any justifiable reason to increase that? Yeah, no, no justifiable, it's one, it stays one. If Huawei was in the game, you'd have a bit more value, but Huawei is in the game, so. I agree. So I guess we'll quickly move on to the next card. Uh, and why don't you pronounce this for me? Because you had already corrected me once today. The one for God <laughs> of the Moon, I believe. Or she yes, goddess of luck. Yeah, the Pharaoh of the Moon. Yeah, the Pharaoh of the Moon. Gotcha. So how do you pronounce that? Changa. Changa. Okay, I've been saying that completely wrong. So a lot of people say Changi or change and i'm just like bro just stop you're making me cringe <laughs> i'm one of those people i'm sorry <laughs> yeah but you didn't know that's the difference if you don't right. know i don't mind because not everyone knows <laughs> what what would you yeah, rate Chunga, her it's the thing with chunga right theory in theory she's a good card that's what i'm saying theory she's four mana for one four that reduces your mana cost She's good, she's like Odin's, because you keep her at the back line, she just takes out one ones. But the problem with her is that what's be, what, what other forecasts are there that are really good in a, in any spell, well, in spell or Godwa? Gladiator, Erlong Sheng. Gladiator, Erlong Sheng, exactly. Now, what what do they both have? Amazing synergy with each other. Chunga is only going to make your Crescent Blades free. That's all she's going to do, basically. I'm not bothered if my cut if I'm not really gonna waste four mana to make my crescent blades free. I I don't care. I can do that with Gladiator and have a four four body. Yeah, I I agree with you there. Um, mm -hmm. I think she would be a hell of a lot more playable if they upped her damage up to a two four, so she had a little bit of combat presence. Yeah, if she was a two four, I'd I'd give her a bit more respect because she then she'd become a body as well as a good ability. So um, I'm I have her at twos. I I don't think she's useless, but there's just better no, better it's options. Not useless. It's not. I would say two constructed, and then arena. I'd say one because you're okay. not going to choose a chunga. That's a that's a very fair point. And we're going to move into the guy that you've probably mentioned more times today than anyone else, which is Erlang Shen. My, the man himself, the person that literally changes a whole game. We're just playing him on the board. Forget if you silence him. Silence this god. Just kill this god. It doesn't matter. He's done his job the moment he enters the battlefield. The fact that he's a 4-4 just adds on to the, just how good he is. Now, when you say how much he changes the game, I don't feel that he's overpowered. I think he's actually properly statted. No, he's not overpowered. He's not, he's not overpowered. He just has a big factor. Impact factor. I'd put him at a four or five just because of how much impact he has i i have fours here as well um i understand if you want to put a five the only reason i went against putting the five is because the upgraded crescent oh, blades do not uh allow you to hit the summoning stone which that would have easily boosted him into five range for me but because it's still units only i'm sticking with the four that's not the reason why I'm putting it at four. The reason why I'm putting it at four is because he's still a condition. To play this card, you have to have crescent blades in your hand, and a lot—not a lot, but enough to to utilize them to capitalize. That's why I'm putting him at four. He's not like Al Kuang, who's just an amazing card in general. He's a—he has to have—he still has a condition that has to be out. He has to to bring him out to do damage. So. That's, That's why I'm putting them at four. Okay, and so you want fours on both? Yeah, I don't think new was just amazing. 
All right. Well, we're going to move on to the next card, which I don't feel very strongly about. Evolve. Um, One. Well, yeah. I've been bitten too many times by this card. Uh, just spawning white tigers or the, the especially now that they have the, the what is the two one that gives protection. He diluted the chance of getting any of the, the good hydras or anything like that. A fury. Just another shitty two drop that you can get off of this card. So I'm with you at one. It's just one. It's not even that. Just the way you have to think of it is that you're playing four mana for RNG. Four mana for RNG. No, you're fine. Yeah, you're right. I'm just keeping that. No one wants to play four mana for an RNG chance. That's what's such a big risk. I agree with you. Um, so we're going to be moving on here to someone I actually really liked before, someone I would have picked in the past for Arena, which is Zong Ki. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about him? You, you talked a little bit about him in the past on why he's not as good anymore. Okay. I used to like Zong Kui. I used to love Zong Kui. I used to think he was amazing. But... I came to reality, I got, got someone pulled me to reality, that he's, he's still conditional. To utilize a Sun Kui, you have to kill, right? And he has to be on the battlefield. That's a lot of conditions for just a demon bag to be good. A lot of conditions. I think so that's fair. If you kill, uh, if you, Exactly. If he kills on quick instantly as he comes out, he's irrelevant. That's one reason. Two, um, what other four drops have we got that are still better than Zhong Kui? Gladiator, Gailong Shen. Uh, thirdly, uh, uh, if, you, if you go drops one drop below him that you can put in the deck, you still got Imperial Guard, which is ten times better. That's true. Now, if he was—he's not ranged. He's about. If he was uh, up to becoming a three-four or even a three-five, do you think he would become usable at that point? No. I'm only going to say this because that need for him to become more useful, then he can change his conditions. Okay. Like, for example, what's the base for his but For example, I'm trying to think of a way to a way to put it for some queen. Yeah, I can't really think of a way to put it, but just the value of him is just not high enough. Well, let me repeat like, something that you had said last night when we talked. Um, mm -hmm. You you had said that Zong Ki obviously has opportunity costs because the strong four drop in the in the Chinese faction, that he has a weak uh, combat stats and his war cry is conditional. So those three combined were kind of problems that in talking to you, I actually removed him from my deck and my Chinese deck has been working a lot better since. So that's the thing. When I had it in my Chinese deck, the problem with playing Zong ah, that's the, I found you've just made me remember my reason. Now the problem with playing Zonkui is that you have to play around Zonkui. When I'm playing a spell new art, I'm not going to play around Zonkui, I'm playing around spells. I'm not going to play it because that was one of the problems with Zonkui. When you bring him out, your first instinct is, I need to kill. If you're playing Godwa, fair enough, but you don't always want to kill. Anyway, you don't always want to trade or try and force out kills because you, they make it low enough for a, a spell to kill him. And also, even if you are playing Godwa, Xing Cheng's ten times better in Godwa, so because Xing Cheng has a better buff. That's fair. Four four, a four four buff to wherever he places an axe, which means people have to put gods over that spot because they land in that spot. Which you know you have a um, a six seven Huyi, and then you're just like, what the fuck, or like a or like a what do you call it? A four, an eight, a six, eight Nezha with a, with spell bonus double damage. Like what the hell? Yeah, 
it's a quick way to end the game and it's it's Just a little a, janky in terms of consistency but i like playing my uh my godwa constructed Chang's deck yeah <laughs> godwa is godwa is i like godwa like godwa i like so but w- w- in terms of the zonki for the are- the arena and the constructed rating where do you have them at <laughs> Arena, I feel like it has a bit more value because Arena is just about killing creatures. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like I'll put him out. Wait, does, doesn't he? Wait, doesn't Demon Bag? Doesn't Demon Bag that he has to kill, right? Oh. No, no, no. It's while he's in play. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll say Arena. He has a bit more value, so I put him at two. But okay. In constructed, I put him at one. Okay. He just yeah. has no value. And I still have him at three and two. I, I see him valuable in arena, but I would never pick him above any of the great four drops you could get out of neutral or um, or out of infaction, to be honest. So I, I won't be picking him much, but I do still see a use for him. Mm-hmm. Next card is probably another five. The five drop. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. The king. The dragon the king. king himself. <laughs> The Dragon King himself, Alcorn. He's kind of broken. Funny fact, actually. Wukong in law did beat up Alcorn. Did he? Mm-hmm. What, was he on the why. Nimbus or what? No, this was when he went into his palace. He wanted the... You know the Crudal that he has? The staff? Yeah, yeah. He didn't... Um, he wanted it. And um, and and then Al Kwong was like, "Yeah, you just take this little like play toy right there, this little like plastic fork." And then Wukong was like, "Oh hell no! I'm taking what I want." <laughs> actually, no, he didn't. Actually, no, he took what he wanted. I don't think he beat up Al Kwong. So that was Neja. Neja beat up Al Kwong and killed his son. Oh Jesus! And do you want to know what Al Kwong's son was called? You're gonna oh. laugh at this one. What's that? Al Bing, like as in Bing, the search, yeah, the search brother, yeah, yeah. Al Bing, that was his name. Huh. So yeah, Al Kwong's kind of like a, and he is a bad father. So basically, Al Kwong's like a prick. He's he's a bad guy though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like uh, one time, uh, what you call it? I think it was um. They did offering to Al Kwong. One time they couldn't do an offering to Al Kwong, and Al Kwong, like, because he controls the seas, he just put the tsunamis and stuff across all, like, towns. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's so, a prick. He's I mean, an idiot. to me, it's an easy five here. Like, I think he's yeah, kind of broken. Easy five. He, he, just, could, just... he could even be destatted. Like, take one off of health and power, and I'd still probably use him, no questions asked. Yeah, you still use him, yeah, exactly. You and he's, he's too valuable. I don't think I'll ever do that, because obviously he needs to survive because of how much people target him when he comes onto the board. But yeah. He could easily he's become a 3-5 and still probably be a 4 to me, though. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a 5. He's just too valuable. Yeah. So our next card is going to be Daji. Daiji? Okay, the one thing I need to say before I, we talk about Daiji. Daiji is weird to me, okay? This god on Smite is literally the queen of dot damage. Everything she does is dot. She's a trickster god, remember? Yeah. She's a, basically, yeah, she's a demon fox. She's the trickster god. So her t- she has a teleport that does damage. She has a one that does dot damage. She has an ultimate Pao Lao, which is actually a torture device, which she did create. A type of torture that she created. Um, which is, um, uh, which does dot damage and stun. So when I was thinking Daiji in the game, the first thing that came to my head was she's probably going to do like bleed damage over when she hits you. She probably do like two turns of bleed damage, or she can just like instantly teleport like Loki and attack someone because obviously they're both trickster gods. So, so are um, you saying you don't feel I that think... they uh, represented her lore from Smite well in this game? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Daiji needs. Like, I understand why they did it because Daiji Beast Wars where Daiji comes in. Yeah, but Daiji's Daiji's law especially has nothing to do with Beast War. I like I get because she's a fox and obviously, but no, 
doesn't go that way. Thanks, now, yeah. Do you, why do you rate her up? Because I think she's incredibly powerful in the right deck. Only one deck. She's powerful. That's but obviously beast ball. Again, that deck can be easily built in Arena, which is the place I'm almost willing to give her a five. I think I'm going four on both, but her I'm ability going three on both. Three? Okay. I'll go, actually, no, I'll go three on both. I'll go three on Arena. Oh yeah, I'm going three. I'm going three. Three on both. Okay. Yeah, just because she's not bad, obviously, but she's not super strong. Like five mana for five five to bring out to give something plus two plus two. Sometimes, but the problem is, is that you only can use her really well. With, like utilize her like, to her best of it is when you're aggressive. If you're not aggressive, or you have to make her trade for the two two trade, for the one one trade, by using the plus two plus two. It's just not that good. No, that's that's completely fair. Um, the next card, so I, th I I think you're gonna give a easy five five yeah. five 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 <laughs> five five. five. <laughs> This if I could give six, dead. he would be six. <laughs> yeah, he would be six. He would be twenty thousand. I don't care what number. He'd be. He'd overcap any number. This card is stupid. He's, He's pretty awesome new though. Ball drive. <laughs> new ass ball drive. New ass ball drive. I say. simple touch. Literally a ball drive. I wouldn't say that. Like without him, the deck doesn't function. But you take out uh, Al Quan and Guan Yu, and you might as well not play. Spell wall at that point. It's just, it's just too good. Like, what the hell wouldn't you play those cards? No, it's too good. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, um, now moving on to one of the newer cards, the Zing Tian. Do you think that this mm -hmm. is playable in both formats? Mm. Oh my bad, I was even in. Um, I feel like. Jing Chang is in constructed. Obviously, Godwa, he like he's amazing in Godwa because buffing your gods are just kind of stupid. Um, but in construct, but in arena, I feel like he loses a bit of value just because I just he's still a bit more situational. But I feel like in uh, Jing Chang, he kind of brings a bit more value. Just for the fact that arena, like now I think about it, because obviously when you're in your arena, you're just bringing out creatures, creature after creature after creature. Now what that axe does is one thing that axe does is that makes people change their play style. Like they have to chump block or body block the axe. Don't block that axe. You really know a god's getting big, and if you know it's one of those gods that you can't really deal with, like a Huyi or Daiji or Harbwa or something like that, it's just a nightmare. No, that's fair. And so I would say ranking. I'll say in uh, uh, ranking. I was, I would say I would say beast war. I kind of rate Jing Chang as well because Jing Chang can make beasts so scary that it's actually stupid. So four, especially if you're on the aggressive and you really have like an arena. I'd say three. I'd say three, three. Just okay. because it has that situational factor. Because you're not always going to land on that tile, so. And five is also, again, a very crowded spot. I'm going to be giving this 3-3 as well. If War Behemoth mm -hmm. and Alquan didn't exist, I would probably be giving him the four here. Exactly. Now we are coming to a card that I think a lot of people don't realize is five. as powerful as it is. I agree. Five, um, five, five, five. I don't think people realize how good of a finisher this is in terms of looking at if you wanted to use Inferno for whatever reason, this is six for six. At the very least, you're able to pay six and nuke their summoning stone. At the very best, they're stupid and put everything in a row and you probably just won the game. Aquan, Dragon King is just an amazing clear. Right. Good clear. Good lethal. Like it's just, um, it just has, it does everything you want to. Did you say it's like you can eight think, with Alquan? It's it's eight if you double out. Uh, it's eight if you yes yeah, eight if you Alquan and then double Alquan is ten. That's probably the strongest turn eleven play that you can come up with then. 
Probably. I've never done a double alcohol. I've done double alcohol on Russian Thunder. I've never done a double alcohol on Dragon King. Jeez. Because it's hard to keep two alcohols alive and well, get a Dragon King out. It's hard. I was thinking uh, if you still have your mana potion, which is rare, you could pull it off. It's true, but it's not even the problem with pulling it off in terms of it's probably it's trying to keep them alive or not getting targeted. True, that is true. I and it gets targeted instantly when it comes out. Same with Guan Yu, they like the instant targets. They have to be. You'll lose the game next turn if you don't kill them that turn. <laughs> We're getting to the high end of the curve here. Uh, we have Sun Wukong here. Five. I don't even think, I don't think anyone needs to say anything for that one. He's a, what, a six for a six, seven. That has three forms that are richly stupid. So he has <laughs> Ox, which is two damage to everything in an adjacent tile, which is basically an Athena, and he attacks knockback. So basically, an Athena with knockback, extra. Uh, Tiger, gain plus two attack. Why is that? that that's not even a bad thing. Plus two, he's eight, seven. How do you stop an eight, seven like that? For six and mana, I'll probably that. say eagle, exactly. And then eagle, which I probably say is one of the most scariest forms of all. Give every ally, including yourself, which is Wukong, double movement speed. Do you understand how many times I lethaled because of Wukong? Like, oh yeah, fire giant. Let's just chomp block. Oh, uh, some Wukong. Oh, I lost the game. I I have to admit I've been on the receiving side of that multiple times in both arena and constructed. It's a very bad feeling when you feel you've got the board locked up in a good state, and he drops the Sun Wukong and just literally runs around your characters. Is that, uh, it doesn't matter. That's the whole point. Wukong is just that type of character. He's scary as hell. He take he causes too much havoc in one in just one sequence. No, I I totally agree. So, and I, I'm definitely yeah, going with fives as well. Mm -hmm. I'm playing. I'm giving him a five across the board as well. Oh, easily. He has to be fives. Okay. Well, we're going to move on to the next card, which is Jingwei, the ponytailed crossbower. You had already Jingwei. mentioned you you removed her from your current deck, correct? Mm-hmm. I still rate her. Like I still, if I could put her back, I would. Cause I do love her. But um, I'll put her at f five or four. Hmm. I'll put her at five just because how much value she has. For both. Yeah. No matter what, Xingwei is just a good card. Well, I think of it as seven mana. It's this the way you go think of it is value you get from seven mana. Seven mana for five four ranged, a free free melee, and a free spell that can go in your favor. So all for seven mana. Yeah, True. definitely worth it. Have you ever got an annihilate or a blight and then lost that game? Yeah. I know I haven't. No, I won. I won because of when I was playing ranked. This was when I was like ranked like fifteen, hedging way. I was losing hard, like he had completely flooded the board. I couldn't, I couldn't, Guan Yu couldn't do anything. Qingwei came out, uh, I, I traded one of the creatures and I got Annihilation and I won a game. Exactly. So she has that RNG aspect where you don't expect anything from that third, you know, gain the spell effect, but if it does pay yeah. off, in addition to already having good stats, I, I, I agree with you. I have her at five on Arena. I drop her to four in Constructed, but um, the five makes sense there to me, too. Okay. So we have our final Chinese card left, which is Inferno. Okay, all right. This card's stuck up iffy with me because one, that's Dragon King. And two, it's 10 mana. Yeah. 10 mana means that's all you're doing that game. Unless you have gods or creatures in the board. So, so like, I like I like the fact it can be a lethal. That factor. It's a good factor for me. But if that's all you can do for lethal, if that's all you can do in a turn, I don't know. I don't like it. Because it's a spell, remember? 
And Spell True. New World doesn't like doing Spell New World does more than one thing with spells. Or in or to affect or make a spell have an effect. have an effect. You don't want to be playing ten mana for one thing and end your turn as new world. Especially if they're uh dropping more than one threat against you. I mean if that's, that's all you got, you could be out of shit out of luck there. So I'll put it at Mm -hmm. I'll put it at Constructed, I'll put it at Two or three Put it at two Okay Rank and then ranked Arena, I'll put it at I'll just put it at two as well So that's some potential it's still it's such a backup. We're definitely in agreement there. I went with two and three for constructed, but I was mm -hmm. honestly waffling between two and three just because, uh, as I said, that that deck by a Comcast employee really had me intrigued a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know, uh, Chima. I appreciate you being here. Want to let everyone else know uh, he's also streaming. If you want to check out his Twitch. Uh, Black Man oh, Chima. Streaming. Well, no, you also stream. I'm sorry. So please uh, go and uh, give him a sub. Uh, give him a follow. He produces great content as well. And obviously, you've been here listening to his in depth expre uh, explanations of the strategies of the Chinese faction. So, you know, please give him a follow. Chinese. And yeah, if Chinese. you like it, shoot me a follow too. We'll be trying to get these out weekly. Uh, probably be seeing if Chima wants to do this as a full-time co-host after this and where we'll be bringing on more people of the community to be talking about their points of of expertise so we all can grow and become better Hand of the Gods players. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. Knight, you didn't tell me you was a World of Warcraft programmer. I was. <laughs> I'll say this: uh, if you want to, if you want to know, like my background, I've worked eight years in video game uh, development as a game designer, as a balancer. In my last pos position, I worked on a AAA title, brings in I don't know, like multiple hundred million dollars a year, and I was in charge of balancing PvP for that game. So. As I said, I ain't no geek from the street when it comes to video games. I'm a 33-year-old <laughs> man. Been playing card games since I was, uh, gotten eight or nine years old. Revised Magic. Uh, I went to compete in the first WoW TCG World Tournament, where I was part of the team that actually the only people that took down Anixia at the time. So I, yeah, my, my roots go deep when it comes to card gaming and, uh, video gaming. And it is also the thing that I've spent most of my, my adult life, uh, using as my form of income. Jesus Christ. I know I'm you just, you, go you, you like, uh, <laughs> you see me and you say, oh, this guy's just some internet troll, but I mean, Hey. We no. can be an internet troll I mean, and a working I mean, professional. I mean, Jesus Christ.